Here we go. The password was, uh, sea salt ice cream, right? Okay, I'm in. Let's get that transporter working. Uh, uh, Damn it, Dog Street, I oh, thought you were on top of this. The transporter's been protected. Protected from what? I guess from us? We can't use it to get to the other Twilight Town. Why not? It worked before. We sent Sora there. Well, that was then. And this is now. And there's no other way? None that I know. Great. But, huh? Hello, Sora. You wouldn't happen to be in front of a computer. Huh? Well, yeah. But how do you know that? I was tinkering with Ansem's computer. You know, to decrypt the code that was left in it. And I noticed that someone had logged in from another terminal. I figured it might be you. Uh, oh, yeah, the log terminal. You don't know what you said. Oh, oh, and what? You do? <laughs> I know. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> yep. Then, uh, who was it that logged in? Oh, uh, hi there. <laughs> This is Pence. I'm the one who logged into the T computer. Titus was a bit late. Good. As long as it's a user that we know we can trust. Yup. But I'm kind of stuck here. Hmm. One of the programs is protected, so I can't uh... run it. Which program? Uh, the transporter to the other Twilight Town. Uh, uh, it's the only way to find Roxas. You gotta help us. Another Twilight Town? And a transporter? Okay. A virtual town inside the computer made of data. A datascape? Fellas! Mm-hmm. We've seen one. That's what we used once to investigate Jiminy's journal. Maybe I can do something. Pence, let's get a network set up. My address here is... <laughs> okay, sharing is enabled. Huh? Were you able to fix it? Now that our two computers have been successfully networked together, I can take control of the terminal there and change the privileges. And Roxas? Yes. For the virtual world to be completely realized, Ansem the Wise would have included Roxas's full data in the construction, meaning Somewhere on your machine, there's a log of that data that, uh, basically, we can decipher Ansem's code more quickly, and we can analyze the virtual Twilight Town while we're at it. Okay, great. I can't computer, so do that. <laughs> Glad you're following along. <laughs> I can't computer. But don't worry, we'll handle I'm it. I'm a computer. Chippendale will be helping me out here on this end. I'll call you back as soon as we know anything more. Thanks. Oh, before I forget, a bit of troubling news. It's about one of the organization's former members. You knew him as Vexen. But to us, he was Ansem's apprentice, Evan. He was recompleted like the rest of us. But hadn't regained consciousness yet. Then, sometime after Lee left, Evan vanished. Alias and Dylan, the two you knew as Lexius and Zaldin, they went out looking for him, but he's just gone. And I'm starting to worry. Oh? You think he's on their side? I think it's a real possibility. He's a devious researcher. You should be careful. All right. Thanks. Oh no! We got work! I totally forgot! Really? But what about all this? Hey, both are important. We're gonna need some cash to go to the beach. Also, don't forget the pretzels. Gotta buy four now. Hmm? Uh... Oh, I get it. He's thinking ahead. 
Later, Sora. Oh, he's getting in from Roxas. Bye, Donald. Goofy. Goodbye. Oh, and since I'm manning the computer here, you guys are in charge of earning my share. No pretzel for pence. <laughs> hey. <sighs> Damn it, I was late on the Titus laugh again. You know what? Here it is anyway. It does not compute. I'm a computer. I mean, I'm not a computer. So, what's next? That's all right. Oh no, I think we have to head over there and run into Zemnis and and Ansem. You know, like in the trailers. God damn it, trailers! Why? So, you think you can bring Roxas back? Zemnis. Roxas should never have existed in the first place. What you seek is impossible. Roxas does exist. His heart's inside my heart. And in the unlikely event you did manage to separate the two, where is it you think you can put his heart? Well, Roxas used to live in the other Twilight Town, right? So, I'm just gonna put him back there. Do you even realize what you are saying? The other Twilight Town is just Data. A heart can live anywhere, even inside Data. There are hearts all around us. Hmm. Huh? Handsome and Zemnis used to be part of the same person, right? But look, now they exist separately just fine. Uh. If they can do it, then I don't see any reason why you and Roxas can't find a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you tell him, Captain Goofy. <laughs> In that case, by all means, nothing would please us more than Roxas's return, of course. You wish he'll never answer to you again. Still so blind. A nobody is what's left behind. When one gives his heart to darkness, there is only one way to bring Roxas back, which is for you to give your heart up as well. Sora, have you finally decided to call upon the darkness? <gasps> what? Go on then. The shadows are never out of reach. I wanted Ansem to just be like freaking Billy Zane again all of a sudden. Now, set your heart free. Wait! Sora! It's not darkness. Not if it helps him. Ha! <laughs> 
jour. Herc said... He said, with all my heart. Okay, then all my heart it is. I'm getting Roxas out. Are you with me? Donald? Goofy? <laughs> you betcha! I don't know what Ansem and Xemnas want, but I think we better tell the others to watch out. Okay then, let's head back to town. <gasps> Well, Donald's voice actor keeps trying to say things slowly so he can get all the syllables out, but he does a bad job. All right, some of them are fun to do.
Did I get turned around? Always look up, love a good fireworks show. I got turned around. Yeah, this thing makes me want to hit everything. Just makes you want to run around whacking things to get stuff all the time. Wait, didn't he sell ice cream in Hollow Bastion? That's right. But Uncle Scrooge here is what you might call a world traveler. Cool. How are you, Uncle Scrooge? Oh, hello, Sora. You're looking hale and hearty. I heard you were on another grand adventure with these two. I hope Donald isn't making a menace of himself. Hold on a second. Wait a sec. Wait, wait, wait. That, is that David Tennant? I can't quite understand him. No word yet who that is. Uh, why did you have to say that? So, Uncle Scrooge, what's that you were saying about a chef? Oh, right, right. The chef of me bistro here wanted to show you his appreciation. So, he baked this for you. Hmm. If they had gotten David Tennant, it would have been much better. Wow! Cake! Hmm? The whole cake? It's for us? Huh? I mean, uh, settle down. Uh, the chef wants you to know it's not a cake, but a tart of fruit. He does? Why keep it under my hat? May I introduce Little Chef? Oh, oh it's you! Uncle Scrooge, you open the bistro and try on town. Aye. It all started a little while ago, when I was enjoying one of the best meals of my life. And when I asked to speak to the chef, I met this wee genius. As it turns out, he wanted to expand his culinary... I should have recognized the bistro. So, I thought, that's an opportunity. And I financed the whole operation. Ooh! I think he wants to cook some more for you. Fix some ingredients. Especially anything unusual. That'll be fun. Kinda like a scavenger hunt. And the more the better. The mark of a truly great chef is creating masterpieces out of anything. You can start right here in town. We'll do anything to try more of little chef's food. Yeah. That tart sure did look scrumptiously delicious. Okay, the ingredient hunt is on. Where'd you put the cake? Go on, 
and lads. You need to scrounge up some ingredients. Guess we're still short. Let's keep searching. Yeah. Yeah. Little Chef needs more ingredients. <laughs> we better keep an eye out. <laughs> Well, I'm starting to get hungry. Yes. I had food not but an hour ago, but I want more now. It's, we find some ingredients around here. It's pretty bad when I do a better accent than that guy. Oh, you sneaky clod. Let's see. I guess we need 20 more AP, but destroys my magic stat. I mean, destroys it. It just does one negative, I guess. Me too! Hey, boss. Uh, Done with the posters. Uh -huh. Hey! Good work, kids. You guys work for Uncle Scrooge here at the Bistro? Um, do we? He gave us a short job putting up these special posters. Mr. McDuck's hosting an open-air film festival in the courtyard. Cool, huh? Not gonna- we're not gonna ask the question? Oh, Sora. Hold your phone up to the poster. Okay. You've just downloaded a promo game for the film. You can try it later. 
You get on this, Uncle Scrooge? Of course, laddie. Provide a bit of entertainment, and then give folks a nice, cozy place to relax. Like my bistro here. They'll all be happy and hungry, and eager to spend their money. <laughs> Uncle Scrooge! Gorge, he sure is canny. I always wondered how he keeps customers coming into his businesses over and over. Oh, yeah, I'm no business guy, but I sure wouldn't want to be one of Uncle Scrooge's competitors. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I need to warn you guys. Why? Well, those creepy crawly things might come back for more. So stay on your toes. Sure. But don't we have you guys to take care of him for us? You have to leave again? Mm-hmm. It's a jam! But we'll definitely be back. When are you gonna slow down? Sorry. Just do me a favor. Well, what is it? Don't make it too tough. I know how Roxas feels to be lost. But Donald and Goofy, Kyrie, brought me back by wishing with all their hearts. Mm -hmm. So, I was hoping the three of you would do the same and wish for Roxas. What? That's it? <laughs> That's no favor. We'll all wish. I'm wishing. Yeah. Me and Pence, too. <laughs> Thanks. Aren't you making it a little too obvious? We were instructed to guide him. Yes, just look at them. They wouldn't get far if we did not spell it out. Huh. Fair enough. But let's not forget how many times Sora still managed to rain on our parade. If he wavers from the path we lay, we destroy him. But in that case, We'll have to find ourselves another vessel. That is why we never have just one iron in the fire. <laughs> <laughs>